series. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Quarantine Film Series. I'm your host, Kavir Segel, coming to you live from the ATL. I want to say hi to everyone watching around the world and a special hello to the folks downstairs. Hi, Mom and Dad. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're back. Did you miss me? It's been a minute since we did a show. Um, and we started this uh, series in earnest, put the spotlight on creative people of all types, musicians, filmmakers, authors. Um, and we've, you know, dozens and dozens of shows. And if you can, I know the quarantine is kind of lifting in some areas, but it's still important to, to help the creative community. So if you can support the local film festivals in your area, go to the local bookshops, support the um, the musicians in your area, creative community uh, needs, um, there's a partnership, a symbiosis between patrons and artists. And I think we need to, you know, burnish the creative community during this time, because it's still, it's still tough out there. And speaking of local, um, Film festivals. I'm obviously here in Atlanta. One of my favorite film festivals is the Atlanta Film Festival, and I was excited to see um, one of their signature films that play this year. And that's the reason we're bringing the show back for this one night only, uh, because of uh, the film, which we'll talk about, is very kind of near and dear to my heart in terms of the topic. And uh, so, if you if you're watching this, a couple things, as you know, drop a comment in the comment field. Let us know what's on your mind. Second of all, let us know where you're watching from, name name and town, if you wish to opine. And um, and third, make sure you watch this wonderful film when, when you get the chance, Carterland. So with that, let's introduce you to the wonderful, remarkable auteur, auteurs, the directors, co-directors of this project, Carterland. Um, the film recently played at the Atlanta Film Festival. Please welcome Will and Jim Pattis to the show. Awesome, yeah, thanks. Hey, Kabir, how are you doing? Good, thanks for uh, taking some time to do this. Let me ask you first, well, um, how is the quarantine going for you? And what is like your your day to day like in in quarantine when you're not going to film festivals and doing the show? What was like the, the average day like for you? Yeah, average day for me. I mean, it's pretty. Uh, you know, a lot of staying inside. Jim and I, we kind of do a lot of public lands work and a lot of that stuff during quarantine. So we typically you'll find us out in like a park or some natural place, but. Lately, I found myself a little bit more cooped up than I want to be, but day to day, just kind of trying to get a walk in at some point. Luckily, um, Jim and I both got vaccinated our second dose this week. Jim is day two on his second one right now, so hopefully he's kind of hanging in there for this. <laughs> but you're looking strong down there, Jim. How are you feeling and, and how are you spending your days in quarantine? Um, yeah, no, I just, I did just get the vaccine yesterday. I was a little, little dazed, a little, little groggy, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting by. Um, yeah, I think, uh, like Will said, we do a lot of public lands work. Um, and so we typically, you know, on a given year, we're traveling almost half of the year. Um, so since quarantine, obviously things changed quite a bit. And that um, was a big change in lifestyle for Will and I, but it allowed us to spend a lot of extra time um, on this documentary. And I really do think that it, it ended up making it a much better film in the end. Yeah, absolutely. So, so Carterland, you both are from. I was reading both from Georgia, right? I saw right. Petrie City. Um, so, I understand the, um, how you might have been exposed to President Carter's story. But what about it? You know, making a feature film is a significant amount of time in your life, or it can be, and you've got to live with this topic. So, what was it about President Carter that made you say, you know what, I want to, I want to turn this into a, a feature documentary? Maybe Will can take that. Yeah, so it's interesting. Coming from Georgia, you'd think that like we would know everything there is to know about President Carter. He's our only president. The South, the Deep South's only president in the last like hundred years. And the truth is we didn't. Like we didn't know much about him at all. Jim and I had kept seeing his name come up in our public lands filmmaking. So he said, Maybe you know, this guy's done so much for parks, maybe that would make a good documentary just on his conservation work alone. And then as we started to do more research, we said, Oh my gosh, like this guy is amazing. He's done so many incredible things. And how did we not know about this? A lot of people probably don't know about this. And so we said, let's kind of turn this bigger picture story into the film. And so now, not only do we cover his incredible conservation achievements, but we cover the gamut. And what you find is he's a very relevant topical guy today who, if he ran now, might have a pretty good chance at winning still based on running on the same things. Yeah, well said, well said. And when um, you were filming this, did you, did you, was it an intention to make the full documentary or was it just like a short? Because I noticed you had done a lot of shorts. Um, what was that decision like, uh, Jim, and saying not a short this time, but to go the whole gamut? 
Yeah, that was, uh, we, we do have a lot of experience in, in short form content and short films, but this was something we had been looking for a feature film project for quite some time. I mean, honestly, for, for a couple of years and we couldn't, you know, quite figure out, you know, we, we gravitated to one thing and then we couldn't, couldn't figure it out. And so, um, after, like Will said, you know, we kept seeing President Carter's name come up. And originally, the original genesis for this film was to make it about his conservation and environmental work um, and, and renewable energy and things like that. Um, and then as we started to sort of build out the film, we realized, you know, oh, wow, there is so much here that's so incredibly relevant today. Um, and so we just told ourselves, you know, um, fairly, you know, a couple months into the project that that we had to we had to do this the whole way. We, we couldn't just um, settle for the uh, the environmental you know, aspect of it. We really wanted to do um, the whole presidency justice because we just didn't feel like there was nothing out there on the big screen that that really um, cast his presidency in the correct light. Um, and we were fortunate enough to get to interview. Uh, John Alter, who was simultaneously uh, writing his book on Carter, which I think has um, really shifted opinions um, on Carter since its release. Uh, exactly. I'm looking forward to the uh, to the musical. Actually, I think there was an opera on on President Carter. Um, just like this revisionist thinking on Hamilton, we need that with President Carter uh, yeah. for sure. Um, let me ask you, kind of a consumer, what a consumer might ask you. If they're looking online, they'll see they'll see a couple of films on President Carter, you know, the rock and roll one, and and some others. So what what makes this film different? Uh, would you say um, what's sort of the, the unique fingerprint of this film, uh, Will? Yeah. So um, uh, there's been there's a couple other pieces of work out there about President Carter in general, but what Jim and I found is there's nothing about out there specifically about those four years that, that he was in office. You have rock and roll president does a really nice job of kind of talking about his connection to the music industry and kind of when he was running for office um and some of his some of the other books and some of the other work that's out there kind of touches about after the presidency but all of those pieces of work which many of them are great in their own right they kind of reinforce this narrative that he's a great guy a great ex-president but not necessarily a great president and this piece of work really focuses on his presidency specifically. This film, um, you know, through Jim and I's kind of research and our progression on this, we feel like people really need to strongly reconsider those four years and stop saying, oh, he's our greatest ex-president and start saying, wow, this guy was probably one of our greatest presidents. And so that was a big impetus for us. And I think that kind of separates it from the pack. That's a great way to say it um, because you hear that, you hear that sort of thread um, a lot and sort of shifting that from X to, to, to he was great while in office. Um, Jim, you know, you enter a, a documentary with intention of what the film might be, but it obviously changes in the edit. Um, how did, how did you strip away the layers to get to the essence of what you, what the story ended up being? What was that process like uh, for you, Jim? It was a long process. Um, it was a really long process. I think uh, we got done with the principal photography for this, you know, just a couple of months before COVID. Um, so we were fortunate in that aspect. Um, and then, you know, we really started to dig into the um, edit of this film. And, you know, I, I would say it probably started off as, a, you know, a three hour film, which unfortunately no one was going to watch. <laughs> um, so we had to really start to trim it down and figure out um, what uh, threads were going to be uh, we're going to tell the story that we set out to tell. And I think, you know, to what Will was talking about, we really set out to dispel this narrative that President Carter was, um, is a great, nice guy and everything, but a failed, a failed president. And we wanted to show people that not only was he a successful president, I mean, somebody who had more legislative achievements than many uh, two-term presidents, including uh, Bill Clinton and Barack Obama, but, um, but he also stood for all these things, even if he didn't, you know, necessarily get a legislative achievement on them. He stood for things that, you know, we're only just now confronting today in terms of climate change, in terms of renewable energy, you know, equitable treatment for women and minorities in this country um, and uh, so many other issues, um, conservation that that, you know, we look at today and we're like, 
we had a president in the 1970s that was standing for the, these things. So I think um, that was what was really important for Will and I to include those narratives in this film because we really are targeting a younger audience with this. We want to show people that we have elected somebody like this um, in the past, you know, with this kind of morality and with this, with these, um, you know, far this kind of uh, vision, and we can do it again in the future. Yeah, and why do you think that um, there's a sort of mythology that he was an unsuccessful president? Was it that he lost Will? Was it that sort of he sort of jokes that he was involuntarily retired? Um, but is it is it that like you know, one term presidents are seen in this way? What do you think, Will? Yeah, absolutely. I think that's a nail on the head right there. It's that if you, if you're a one term president, then it, people evaluate your failures. If you're a two term president, then people evaluate your successes. And unfortunately, in Carter's case, he had a lot of headwinds against him. But for this, we kind of want people to really look at it and, and look inwards at the end of this film. Um, obviously, he doesn't win in the end, and we wish we could have kind of changed that. But for this, we want people to kind of examine, okay, who are the people that I'm going to vote for looking ahead? You can see that he was, history will prove that he's right more so than we can even in this film. I think in the next 50 years, 100 years, they'll people will look back and say, wow, this was an incredible human being and president. And so for, you know, prospective voters out there and younger folks, especially, we want us, our own generation, millennials, to look at this and say, man, we, he wasn't a failure. He was actually a success. These things he was doing are successful. And if people in the future take those same things and do them again, they can be successful. And that's really the takeaway we hope for here. What was the response within the Carter camp? Um, have, have people close to him, has he seen it? Uh, what's any, any feedback you can share about uh, the Carter Center and the people there? Yeah, um, so we did. Um, President Carter and Rosalind were able to see the film. Um, and we actually we were able to speak with them by phone um, after they saw it. And they were um, very, very very moved by the film. Um, I, they said that it was a, an incredibly emotional experience and, and deeply gratifying. Um, and that was, you know, when you get that kind of feedback from, from the subject of your film, I mean, I, you know, I don't know what more you could want. Um, so that was, that meant, that meant an awful lot to Will and I. And then of course, um, you know, within the Carter Center and, and people working at the Carter Presidential Library and, and um, historians, you know, who, who know Carter and have either written books about him or, or studied him, you know, we got a lot of, of terrific feedback on the film from those people, which, which meant a great deal to Will and I, because we, you know, it, it's very difficult to do um, you know, a presidency justice in a film, even if it's, you know, four hours, let alone, you know, two hours. And so um, that's always something you're, you're weary of when you go into it. But we felt like this was something that needed to be done. And we're, we're really pleased with, with the uh, reaction we've been getting. And this was also one of the last, or if, the, if not the last interview with Walter Mondale, is that correct, Will? Yeah, that's correct. Um, and for us, I mean, not only was it the last interview with Walter Mondale, it was also the last interview on camera with Paul Volcker. And so, I mean, Jim and I have really felt the weight of that, especially when Chairman Volcker passed away earlier in 2019. You know, doing these giants justice in this film was a weight that we really felt. And so um, we're really enthusiastic and excited. I mean, Vice President Mondale gives the opening line of the film, and it's a really great one. Um, we hope that folks kind of watch that. It's it's really cool. But he's a tremendous force in this film, and also was for President Carter. I mean, he's the guy who transformed the modern vice presidency. The vice presidents are relevant today because of President Carter and Vice President Mondale. So that was uh, that was a big moment for us as well. Yeah. Talk a little bit about the atmospherics of um, the fil film, uh, Jim. How did you um, think about music, um, setting the mood in terms of um, just sort of the feel, the feel and aesthetic of, of the of the project? Yeah, that's a great question. I think when Will and I were kind of digging into the the edit of this film, I mean, a a even as we were we were filming it, you know, we kind of went from the approach we we had written out a bunch of things that we wanted to cover and. And things like that, but of course, you know, in a documentary like this, I think what a great way to approach it is is to um, you go out and get the interviews, and the interviews are really going to tell the story for you. 
Um, and and as we were getting these interviews, we were getting some really incredible stuff. And so we we shaped our you know continually reshaped our narrative around that. Um, one of the films that we we actually looked at um, as kind of uh, that we wanted to. To a little bit of a similar feel was was the um, "Won't You Be My Neighbor," the Mister Rogers film that documentary that came out a couple years back. Um, we felt like you know President Carter was a similar character in the sense that um, you know, regardless of your party affiliations, you can't help but like President Carter as a human being, as a person. And so we felt like we're starting at that level, um, and then now we're trying to show you that you know during his presidency. Um, not only was he this great moral and, and ethical guy and, and, and likable guy, but he also, you know, stood for all these incredible things. Um, and so that was important to us. We wanted a score that was going to give you this feeling that, um, you know, it was going to give the emotion that the film wanted. I think so many documentaries, um, particularly on politicians, you don't get the emotion um, that uh, that Will and I like to include in 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 a film like this is in a feature film and wanted to include and so we were very fortunate actually um, I uh, found a composer who um, I had followed I, there was a person's work I followed online um, and he did a the score to this short film and I thought man this is just such a great score this is exactly the kind of music we want reached out to him. Turns out he lived a couple blocks from Will in Portland, Oregon at the time. Wow. And, uh, and Andrew Seistrup, and he has just been, um, you know, his score is absolutely amazing. And he's getting a lot of uh, well-due uh, credit for that score. And, and we couldn't have been more pleased with it. And he just, I mean, you know, to score wall-to-wall -wall music for a two-hour feature film is, is quite a feat. And he did went above and beyond. We were really thrilled with it. That's amazing. Uh, what a, I guess, coincidence when, uh, when things are meant to be, they sort of come together like that. Um, great story. Is um, I know it was uh, it won the best doc documentary feature. Congratulations at the Atlanta Film Festival. A nice homecoming uh, for a film such as this. Yeah. Um, what is the next uh, step? Like, how can people watch the movie? Yeah, so um, for Jim and I, this is our first ever feature film. We've never done one of these before. And so right now, you know, we've taken it to the Atlanta Film Festival and you've got Chris Escobar over there who does a really great job running that festival. He's been hugely helpful for us, just mentoring us and coaching us like, okay, this is what you do next and this is what you do. So we're in kind of for a learning curve here as far as it goes. Our next step is... We're, um, we've gotten into a couple more film festivals. I don't think they've been announced yet, so I, I don't want to be the person to spill the news here, but um, really we're looking, we feel like this is really timely right now, so we'd love to get it out to a distributor um, sooner rather than later from our perspective, but that's kind of where we sit right now. Got it, no, it's, uh, it's a learning process, but uh, you have a great project on your hands, and I'm sure there's, there's gonna be a significant interest. Um, what do you think is the takeaway for like politicians when they see this? Um, do you think there's some lessons that, I don't know, the current administration, you know, obviously there was a meeting that happened recently, uh, but Jim, what do you think are some, you, I know like people in, in anyone running for office, when they see this film, they should, they should, uh, t take to heart. Yep. Great, great question. Um, I think for Will and I, the takeaway, uh, that we want from this film, or at least one of the, the major takeaways that we want viewers to come away with this film, not only viewers who are, are politicians or aspiring politicians, but anyone watching this film, is it's it's the moral thread of this film really ties together the entire film. And it's it's President Carter's um, refusal to compromise his morals um, throughout his his presidency. And he pays a very heavy price for that. Um, but it's it's about morality and it's about um, what you know the kind of leaders that we want you know do we do we want somebody who's going to speak in platitudes and who's going to um you know uh, say that you know everything's great and and not ask anything of us or do we want leaders who are actually going to challenge us to be better and who are going to take the political risks um to do what's necessary to do the right thing um and carter does that time and time again throughout his presidency and that is what this film's about is it's it's 
demonstrates, you know, how just how many times Carter wades into the fray, knowing full well he was not naive. He knew that it was going to cost him politically. Um, you know, the Panama Canal, um, Alaska lands. Um, you know, Camp David was a huge risk, and, and all these other things. You know, um, water. You know, the dams, the water conservation projects, and uh, and he does it knowingly and. That is just that's so rare for for politicians, um, not only in our country, but but all over the world. And so I think it's something for people to look up to and say, you know, Carter wades in and and he um, he does the politically unpopular thing, but it's the right thing to do. And in in hindsight, we know that it was. Um, but, you know, obviously he pays the ultimate price for it by not getting reelected. So let's take those lessons of President Carter's. Um, and let's reward our leaders for taking those kinds of risks and for um, standing up for for their morals and for for ethics. Um, and and maybe in the future we'll give them that second term. Great, I like that. It required watching for for all uh, the entire citizenry to <laughs> for <laughs> those who are running and those who are voting and those who want to vote. Thanks for. Um, creating this movie. Um, I'm excited for people to experience it and see sort of um, just how a man was ahead of his times. Um, and so everyone who's watching, please go to carterlandmovie.com. And I'm sure when there's an update as to the film festivals and distribution, you guys will probably post it there, I hope. And so, um, and then reach out to these guys to uh, see how you, how you can uh, be supportive, tweet, follow them, all that stuff. Let's get this film out in the world in the best way that we can. Uh, thanks so much, Will. Thanks so much, Jim, for being on the show. Thank you, Kabir. Yeah, thanks for having us, Kabir. Really appreciate it. My pleasure. That's our show today, everyone. Um, keep it here for um, provocative, thoughtful conversations with great filmmakers um, like these two gentlemen. And you can follow me on social media on all my platforms um, to see who will be on, who will be on the show and um, how to ask questions. Have a great time. Make sure to get vaccinated and uh, stay safe, everyone. Take care.